Hi, this is Mentality Meets, and my name is Peter Larkham. So this is part of Mental Health Awareness Week. We are on day three, and today we have Lauren Silver, who is a clown and a performer, and absolutely awesome. Uh, I have been on one of her workshops, and I have to say, I have not laughed so much, um, and would totally recommend, if you can, get her into your workplace, because this is all about play, happiness, enjoying it, building positive mental health and well-being within our, our companies and our strategies and our teams. Um, so, you know, once again, no idea where this conversation is going to take us, but this is Mentality Meets. So Mentality Meets is all about being real, open, honest about mental health and talking about mental health, the good, the bad and the ugly and all that jazz. So um, health warnings, we don't know anything about you. We don't know what your personal experience is of mental health illnesses, whether you are experiencing uh, symptoms and, and situations at the moment or whether you have done in the past. We don't know um, whether you're supporting people with mental health illnesses. We, we don't know anything about this. Uh, and so we just have to be aware of all the different things that are going on inside of you. So if you are struggling during this time together and you need some help or support, please feel free to use your chat bar and send me a message directly. Otherwise, you have access to the Samaritans on 116123. You can also text SHOUT to 85258. And we are also banging out about uh, an organization called Hub of Hope which is www.hubofhope.co.uk. Now, what we love about Hub of Hope is that within that website, you put in your postcode and it will show you all the mental health provision for your local area, which means if you're supporting people on the other side of the country, you can put in their postcode and it will show all the mental health support and provision in their local area. So fantastic resource. So Lauren, Thank you for joining us. Can I just ask you to give us a little bit of a background as to who you are and mm -hmm. how you are doing what you're doing, basically? Yeah, sure. So um, I'm Lauren Silver. I, you know that bit. Um, I am a clown and a theatre maker and an actor. And also um, I sort of uh, campaign, I guess, or advocate for sort of well-being and play. Somebody said a, a play specialist, which I loved, but then I Googled that and uh, apparently that's a thing in hospitals for children, which I think I want to reclaim that because I feel like I'm a play specialist for adults um, or young people. Uh, so I um, have been sort of making theatre for about 10 years. Um, I trained as an actor and then I sort of fell into doing clowning and improvisation along the way. Um, I've toured nationally and internationally with shows um, and my work and um, then I for the last four years I've been sort of building and developing my company Playwell um, and that is uh, we train and use play to um, sort of help connect and um, look after people using play and uh, through workshops and shows and through that time as well I made a um, autobiographical clown show called Surprise and uh, that show uh, I've been developing for the last four years um, and it was finally ready to be premiered in a theatre in Liverpool uh, this week actually but uh, as we say in improv uh, circuit plans and uh, hopefully it's going to be uh, it's going to be postponed till next year which is great it's um and that is a show based on my personal experience around anxiety and um my sort of my sort of love i guess of sort of passion around well-being and therapy um my personal experience was my dad passed away when i was 17 and so i've been um seeing a therapist since I was 17 and I, I think I said to you Peter earlier like I'm really passionate and it became a, nor a bit part you know normality as part of my life as well um also my family are Jewish and so I think I just assumed that like Jews invented anxiety <laughs> so like so like I was I just it's been a real part of our not invented but we've really claimed it um so it's been a real part of our um for me and just my life and what I started to realise over the time from when I was 17 that I was, um, like many comedians or people who work in comedy, using, using comedy to talk about my experiences. Um, I have, for quite a long time, had quite bad death anxiety. Um, and it was something that I was able to sort of find 
in some ways fun and liked through because it was a way that I was able to connect with what was happening. Um, so it's, you know, it becomes a part of the norm for me, really. Um, but the show itself, uh, yeah, it was set in a, the show set in a surprise party and the audience were invited to throw basically um, in some ways like a theatrical piece of exposure therapy and there's surprises along the way it's really interactive and really fun um, and then I developed these workshops that um, are developed around improvisation and planning principles which I can delve more into the details but um that's it oh and I volunteer at a hospital with my uh, therapy dog Wally uh, who is in a lot of my uh, videos that I make but yeah I do that I I put a LinkedIn uh, video of you out because you did a video just the other day around yeah, um, yeah. Uh, anxious thoughts. Yeah, uh, yeah. And use your use your dog as the context of an anxious thought, kind of zipping in and out of the video. Yeah. And it it was the it was the most simple and yet perfect explanation of how anxious thoughts work i thought it was brilliant oh, uh, so if you haven't seen that do kind of go on to to my linkedin page and just kind of watch the video or go on to lauren's page and watch the video um and it's just brilliant um so i've also realized i've not even said hi to people yet i haven't uh, asked you to engage with your chat bar um so i need lauren i need a decent question um and i'm going to steal something from your activity uh yeah, that we've done before good. So um, on your screen, if you go into gallery view, okay, so go to gallery view and you'll see everybody who's on the screen, okay? Um, also, if you've just joined us, your video may well be off. So if you want to have your video on, please make sure you turn it on. I can't control that. But what I want you to do is I want you to point to Lauren, okay? So for me, Lauren is that person there. Okay, so I need you to kind of figure out where Lauren is in the context of your screen. And yeah. um, it looks like for everybody, Lauren, you are in the same place for yeah. all of us. Yeah. Check out your authority in the context of Zoom meetings. Yeah, you look at you. Oh, right yeah. there, brilliant. <laughs> so on your chat, I would like you to uh, put hi, what's your name? So I want you to know what your name is. I want to know where in the country you are from um and uh i've got to have a, a more interesting thought process for for these sessions i should spend more time thinking about what what i'm asking of people so what's your name where in the country are you and mm. have you ever attended counseling oh, yeah. yes or no Okay, so because uh, that's a little bit of a kind of interesting process. So we've got um, Joe in Hampshire saying yes. We've got Carol uh, yeah. from the New Forest saying yes. I have attended. Kay in London saying yes. Melanie saying yes in Oxfordshire. Emmy in Chester saying yes. Desiree uh, saying yes. Um, Sonia saying yes. Eleanor saying yes. Dave saying yes. Wow. Um, uh, Alison in North Luke saying yes. Chandy saying yes in Bournemouth. This is this is amazing. Yeah. It's amazing. Uh, Gillian and Winchester saying no. Me too, Gillian. I didn't want to be the first person to say it. Is that embarrassing as a no. person who's kind of leading these sessions? Um, but I, I've never, never experienced counselling firsthand. Um, and I constantly tell everyone that I'm working with to do it. Go get counselling. Go get counselling. Hmm. Um, and in all honesty, uh, I think I now need to because this is this is yes. So. Um, so the, the 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 question so someone's just kind of sent me a, a personal message so, so i missed the question so what's your name uh where in the country are you and have you attended counseling uh was the question helen in oxfordshire saying no so we're now getting the no's coming through because i think they're embarrassed that it was just a swarm of yeses at the beginning of that chat but it's so encouraging um and so another question out there having attended counseling did it help yes or no just a very quick yes or no did it help uh counseling is it a good thing yes 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 <laughs> kaboom this is a whole load of yeses i love it amazing <laughs> tandy kinda kind of yeah. kind of mediocre kind of hmm but also, kinda, maybe don't you think it's i think with um i think with therapy and counseling it's such a journey it's such a there's so much about therapy and counselling first of all it's got to be somebody that you feel like you can connect with that you feel that you can build a good professional relationship with 
um, also it can develop over time of what you need as well and what you want. Sometimes it's CBT, so cognitive behavioral therapy, where it's active um, logical steps for the next stage. Sometimes you want to go back in time and talk about all of that stuff. I think it's such a tangible, movable thing. I feel so passionate today about <laughs> therapy, but um, yeah. because I think it's, it's, I think there isn't one way of doing it and there isn't one way, is that there isn't one perfect way and you change. You, you're constantly changing the way your outlook constantly changes. So what you need, it maybe a year before might be different to two years later. It's, and you've got to, I think you've got to feel free to know that that relationship can shift. I've, I've been through my fair share of therapists. I'd like to say that that's nothing to do with me. Because <laughs> um, that was going to be my, that was going to be my question, Long, because you said that you started counselling when you were 17. You've had counselling kind of yeah, ever since. Yeah. Um, now, I don't want to say how old are you now, because that, you, you should never ask that question. Um, <laughs> but um, the question I was going to say is, has it been the same counsellor? And you've just said no, no by, by, by no stretch of the imagination. No, is it the same one? I think I you know, somebody, a conversation I, I have a lot is, um, did I ever think about getting therapy or counselling before my dad passed away? And uh, um, or needed or was never in a stage of wanting that. I think I've always been somebody who, my family are very much, we think something and we say it, that, that has, there's never been a block there for anything. We don't, there's no blocking, there's no, so it's always been a very open emotional family to be able to talk about what we need. But originally I went to see a therapist because I was having quite stressful dreams about my dad, about the whole situation. It was, you know, it was really sad. It was really traumatic. Um, it was, you know, it was a, it was a really rubbish. It was a really rubbish time. And I was having quite, repetitive sort of obsessive dreams about the situation quite soon afterwards um and so i was sort of recommended to go see a therapist who gave me a tip about that which i can share it's wonderful so you imagine so you imagine the thoughts or the dream or the situation and it's about removing yourself so then you imagine it in black and white and then you imagine yourself watching it on a black and white telly then you imagine yourself watching yourself watching it on a black and white telly and eventually what that does is it starts to remove yourself from it and that just became like a light bulb moment for me of going here's a really tangible logical because like my i have to have the logic it's just the way so if i need that logic and that explanation as well as emotion um i found that such a helpful way to sort of separate myself i guess and that has sort of become a basis of a lot of how i work now is just having an understanding of what that is and understanding how that that doesn't necessarily you're not stuck with that forever that's not just going to be how you're going to feel for the rest of time and from having that therapist then i saw her until i went to university went to drama school and then saw a therapist at drama school just because it for me it was a maintaining of my emotional state which was really important and um then i've just moved around quite a lot in london and i've had a therapist that retired one that had to stop so um you know hopefully it's never been a personal thing <laughs> but if it has <laughs> it never said um I, mean, so. I think that's fascinating because on the chat i mean uh we've got the responses of um it's definitely about the relationship you've got to find the right counselor yeah. uh, and the right type of counseling um it doesn't work for everyone it's all about relationship one size doesn't fit all uh you've got to realize that you need it before mm. you can actually start kind of engaging with it I thought that's brilliant um and Melissa said it's a shame that we just don't see counselling as an additional tool to our overall well-being uh, yeah. we only seem to consider it when we need it well exactly I, Melissa, I completely agree I think there's it doesn't necessarily isn't necessarily the way it works for everybody but it's something that I feel really passionately about and it I feel like it's something in some ways you should opt out of as opposed to opt into, it should be available that you could say, actually, this isn't for me, as opposed to making that process of going into it. It's just to have somebody to listen to you non-judgmentally is such a, is such a sort of wonderful, sort of freeing thing to have that you're able to just talk and then, or, you know, giving you active tools because we're constantly shifting and changing and it shouldn't, I've definitely got to a stage where there was a time I wasn't seeing a therapist and I got really, I got really sick again, I got really low. 
And I was like, this is because, and, and I, because I haven't spoken to somebody for a while, I haven't been able to recognize it. And I go, I think I don't see my therapist. I sort of check in with her when I'm ready, but that's because I've been seeing her since I was 17. So I'm able to sort of recognize when I need to talk to somebody, but that's taken me years to get to. Um, and now I'm sort of able to go, okay, I think I really need to check in. And I've just learned a lot about myself and a, a lot about listening and listening to other people, which I think is great. I think it's a cracking thing. Oh, amazing. Yeah. Um, so in essence, kind of, we've got to the point where counselling is a good thing. Uh, yeah. And I would like to encourage you to explore it. Uh, try it. If you haven't tried it already. Um, if you work in a company, you, you may well have something called an employee assistance program or an EAP. Okay, employee assistance program. Uh, it is the quickest way of accessing counselling in the UK at the moment. Okay, um, and you need to realise that because it's not just for you, but it may be for anyone who lives in your home address. Okay, uh, so it's for your family members as well. Um, so that's if you're working in a company. If you aren't working in a company, then you have the IAPT, which is the I A P T. Okay, IAPT. But the thing with that, you need to Google your local area and IAPT because it's called different things in different regions. But it stands for Improved Access to Psychological Therapy. Um, quicker, but not necessarily quick. Okay, uh, counselling before the lockdown process was an eight to ten month period. Okay, employee assistance program two weeks. So it really is the quickest way of accessing counselling if you have access to one. Um, <clears throat> so. Uh, just kind of reading one-to-one -one group counselling. So Sonia said had group counselling, but one-to-one -one definitely worked better. Carol said I could only do it one-to-one. -one. Um, and the differences in experience, uh, and it may well be over the phone, not face-to-face. -face. And Melissa is saying that about the employee assistance program. Um, we'll certainly kind of start off over the phone. Um, and in the context at the moment, it's simply about encouraging people to talk. Yeah. Don't be afraid to talk about what's going on. Uh, and if you can do that over a Zoom meeting or over a, a phone call, Brilliant. Okay. So Lauren, sorry, uh question for you. You you said in your introduction that you had a you've written a play, you created a play and you launched the play yeah. that was due to launch this week. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. what is that play called? Because I would love to know about it. So the show is called Surprise. Um and so it's a clown show, so it's interactive. Uh so it's me with the audience and the setup is that I really don't like surprises, which is true. Um, but as a way of exposure therapy, um, I've decided as the clown, so the character, so not necessarily me, it's sort of a version of me, has decided that they're gonna throw a a surprise party for myself and the audience are going to help me do that um in a way that will expose me to the thing that i'm scared of which is surprises uh, but the way that we do that with exposure therapy is you gently expose somebody to things that they're scared of so we work through sort of in a very safe fun way it's all sort of safely done i've worked with psychologists and therapists um over the time to develop it so there's nothing there that is you know you're not watching somebody in is sort of not having a good time but the wonderful thing about clown and something that drew me to sort of that style of performance is um clowns are encouraged to be really vulnerable and open and generous there's no fourth wall with clowning you are with the audience and i love that i love that ability to connect with people you know we break it straight away i'm directly i mean i give audience members confetti cannons they're encouraged to set that up at any point during the show and it's to help me to surprise me um everyone wears a party hat it's fun i dress as a big amygdala which is i've done another video of that so loads of my props and part of my show is just like in my house going like i've got to wait another year but um it's all so i'm sort of using these small videos to sort of develop a bit of a fun way uh, to talk about the work and I think it was interesting I know you have talked about this before and I know there's quite a lot within the speakers collective people who work in comedy so Dave and Juliet and Jake um, and I think the interesting thing about using comedy for me and for clowning is it's a, a way of sort of distancing yourself from what's happening without blocking or saying that this thing isn't happening it gives you this ability to sort of distance it because a lot of what happens to me I think is really silly and stupid. Um, not stupid like that stupid, but just funny. Um, and when I'm able to sort of remove myself, I'm able to 
look at it a little bit more objectively, logically, which is how you can also be encouraged. And it's a really sort of generous way to share those moments with people. And it's encouraged just people to say, oh, I feel that as well without feeling any judgment. And um, yeah, I just, I love it. I think planning and improvisation, which is the basis of all my work, all the work I do in my workshops as well. It's a really generous sort of open way to talk about something um, that you can welcome people in and sort of encourage people to share those experiences with you. I think that's brilliant because I mean, Dave and I uh, want to talk on, on Monday mm -hmm. and um, Dave was explaining kind of his experience of the OR uh, session. So both Dave and I were in the same thing. <laughs> and he said he just loves the fact that um, you can't do anything wrong, that yeah. failure is actually okay. Yeah. yeah. So um, and in a world where we are so kind of driven by almost perfectionism, we're kind of mm. in that, it's got to be right, got to be right, got to be right. Uh, yeah. to have the freedom to actually say you know what it can just be silly and it can just be wrong yeah. uh, in the world's eyes but that's yeah there's no such thing as failure in the yeah. context of this in so three principles of improvisation which I use in all my work is um one of them is mistakes are gifts so you're encouraged to fail you're encouraged to make mistakes because you don't know what um you don't know what can come from that. And if you're constantly trying to be a perfectionist, as I'm definitely guilty of that, you're not able to sort of open yourself up to see what happens. So mistakes are gifts, they're opportunities. And I encourage people, I say, you have, feel free to fail as much as possible. There's no judgment. It's being open, it's being generous. Just make mistakes here because that's so something that holds us back. It drives us, you know, to sometimes to distress, it can do because, we just want to get things right. And I think with improv, you never know what's going to come out of your mouth and what glorious things can happen next. I've seen wonderful shows where worlds have been created because somebody just misheard what somebody else said and just ran with that. And it's glorious. So I say it all the time in the workshops, fail, 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 and just embrace failing. And um, the other one is, um, is make, make, make the others look good make other people look good don't focus on your, we're always focused to be looking in if you're just focused on the other people in your team and making them look good and they're doing that for you then you're you're gonna as a team you're gonna smash it because you're just your job is just to make the other people look good um and then the other one is yes and which is saying yes to things and accepting that that is happening you're not agreeing you don't have to agree with everything, but it's just accepting that that has been said or that um, idea has been put into the room or yes, okay, I'm having a negative thought. I accept I'm having that, I'm not gonna fight it. Now what do I need to do? It's just those three, yes and mistakes are gifts and make others look good. I think I just like rules for life. Just, <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. Oh, you know what? I. Oh. <laughs> there is so much there's so much good stuff in what you're talking about um and i, I want to try and figure out how do we release people in the call today to fail at something today mm. um because it's not the kind of question that you say hey what would you like to fail at today why don't you put it down in the chat that'd be amazing <clears throat> that's kind of not the question no yeah. well yeah why not why not let's i mean if you feel comfortable to talk about something that you might fail at or but failure isn't necessarily an inward thing it could just be things don't happen in the way that you want them to and sort of shout up it's great dave fails to pay his rent regularly that is good to acknowledge and accept that that's happening but it's okay to just say because then you can ask for help then you can say this isn't going the way i want it to it's frustrating but holding on to those feelings so as soon as you know covid happened and a show i've been working for towards for four years which in the grand scheme of things you know losing a lot of my work i just honestly shouted suck it lands really loudly in my flat because i was like i can't control this thing so I have to hold on tightly and let go lightly is what we say about ideas, um, which is a really help. I find it a really helpful thing to sort of just walk away from and go, okay, this isn't, this isn't, this hasn't gone the way I've wanted to, but it does mean other opportunities are going to happen. So, um, yeah, you can talk about things wow. that you fail. So, <clears throat> oh my gosh. Okay. So control. 
so often we want control over things mm -hmm. and you've just kind of stated that when the uncontrollable happens you have to let stuff go mm -hmm. um and yet okay oh difficult question potentially in this who here is still holding on that the old way of life is going to come back next week okay who here is holding on to the going to hope that normal life of what it was before is going to come back next week because by holding on to that are we stopping ourselves from moving into our next step mm -hmm. of life mm -hmm. because we are holding on to something that is not a current reality we don't have control of it our current reality but is it holding us back from from the future so um uh, okay, let's just go back on this. So, um, penicillin was found by a failure. I like it. Um, failed to do things on my to-do list uh, for the fifth day in a row. Brilliant. Uh, failing at the website. Make mistakes. Um, feel like I failed. And this sends me into a spiral of emotions, often tear and anger. Um, and then, uh, kind of, Kellogg's cornflakes were, were found by accident, apparently. That? Uh, amazing story. Um, and then the question about, are we still hoping that the, the reality is going to come back? Nope, nope, nope. nope. No, no, I love no, it. Everyone's no, just no, like, snap, snap. No. Rubbish question, Pete. Rubbish question. Um, beginning to realise that it will change, uh, but I'm okay with change, like that, Desiree. Um, and that change is good. Change is good, isn't it? Yeah, it's oh, difficult okay. to not be able to... Oh, you're right. He's gone. <laughs> 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 Goodbye. I disagree. Um, yeah, I think I think change is scary and terrifying, but also it's something that is inevitable and we can plan and plan and plan for things. But yeah, they're, they're going to shift. And I guess it's still feeling comfortable that you're still in control of how you decide to respond to that. Um, but that just takes time and just being a bit kinder to yourself to know that that will come. But yeah, to trust it, to trust that the change is going to happen. We don't know, but we are living a shared experience all together. Everybody is going through this. This isn't just something that no, you know, one person is experiences. We're all experiencing what's going on. We're all going to find out how this big change is a new opportunity for us. Um, yeah. Huh. Amazing. Well, Lauren, uh, I have to say it is eleven thirty. Our time has absolutely <laughs> raced today. There's been so much good stuff that you've been bringing out in this conversation, um, and we didn't even get to the point of me saying, "But hang on, you're such a happy, smiley, engaging person with this underlying anxiety process going on all the time, uh, and how that works." But I mean. You just kind of stated that in the midst of your anxiety, you have to come to a place of being allowed to just let stuff go. Um, and I just find that absolutely fantastic. So in the context of Mentality Meets, we promise that these will last half an hour, which means that our time is up. Therefore, if you do need to log out, please feel free to do so. You can stay on the chat for a little bit longer uh, if you would like to. Um, but otherwise, this has been Lauren Silver. I have been Peter Larkham. Thank you so much for joining us. Take care. God bless. And bye-bye now. So that was the official ending. Okay. Uh, official ending done. Um, hey. Lauren, we do have some volunteers still left with us. Have you? Yeah. If, if oh. anyone's interested to kind of stick around and, and I, I'm, I'm putting you on the spot here. You don't have to do anything. I'm happy to, yeah. <sighs> We've got three volunteers here. So Peter, I would like, what I would like you to do is I would like you to, I'm going to give you some, like a subject matter. And I would like you to list eight things as quickly as you can to do with what I'm going to say, but say the first thing that comes to your brain, don't think it, don't overthink it, just say the first thing. Um, I find this really helpful when I am trying to come up with loads of ideas or I'm trying to come up with an idea for something. So if I, for example, was making a video, I was like, okay, I want it to be about this, what's going to be in it? And I, it's called a brain dump where I just literally write as much as possible, but this is sort of a verbal brain dump. Um, I don't so this is just a really helpful way to you to help generate some ideas. Um, don't ever think. Okay, it. so uh, hold on. You're gonna you're gonna give me a subject, and yep. I'm just gonna go for eight, eight things, things that yep. come straight into my mind. As Can I just clarify? Um, 
uh, I apologize in advance. This is being recorded. I may have to edit this out. I have no idea what I'm about to say uh, or the context of what Lauren is going to give me. I've been on one of Lauren's work courses before and was ashamed at what I said uh, in the midst of it. So uh, let's kind of go go with this. Let's, let's see what happens. Okay. Um, yeah, if anybody else wants to put their microphone on, as long as it's not too, you know, it's nice to hear each other laughing. So don't feel like you have to be quiet. Um, or not laughing or being horrified. Um, all of the things. Peter, whenever you're ready, I'm going to count them for you. So I'm going to shout okay. out each number. So from eight to one, I want to say as many, so as many words or as many things you can do with a colander. Go. Uh, wear it as a hat uh, well, and pretend that you're in the army. Um, right. Use it as a uh, baseball bat with your kids when you're playing, not not on your kids, that would be wrong, but with Dude, a tennis no. ball using it as a bat. Um, <laughs> right. With a colander you can uh, pour water through it and see it all coming out the holes. Um, you can uh, use it as water play, that was a, a, a okay, third one. Um, you Don't can me. fill it with sand and again kind of rustle it through and pretend that you're digging for gold. Oh. Um, you can, what can you do with a colander? you can uh, actually use it for its purpose of putting vegetables in and washing vegetables. Why not? <laughs> right. You can't do that with a colander. Um, how, wh how many am I up to? You're at you've done five. Five? Great. I've got another Great. three Great. to Don't do. Um, okay, so, uh, so the another thing that you can do with a colander is you can put wires on it and pretend that you're electrocuting yourself and you're a mad scientist. Uh, <laughs> you can... Yeah. Um, turn it into uh, a breastplate and uh, pick up a broccoli and pretend that you're a, 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 uh, what are they called? Um, knight in shining armour. Uh, seven. Um, you can uh, go around to Dave's house and give it to Dave as a present. Hey, let's give him a round of applause. <laughs> Glorious, absolutely glorious, Peter. Um, that was great. Who else would like to have a go? You, Emmy, do you want to have a go? Yeah. Great. Okay. okay. Um, uh, Peter, would you like to give <laughs> Peter? Would you like to give Emmy uh, a a subject? Emmy, I would um. like to know eight things you could do with a golfer's bag where they carry their golf sticks in. Okay, go. So I could use it to keep my yoga mat in. One. Um, I could take it camping with me and keep all my camping stuff in it. <laughs> <laughs> I could use it as a golf bag. <laughs> um, I, um, I, could ro I could fill it, stuff it full and use it as like a, a body roller, like a massager. What? I think it's a good one. Um, oh. What else could I do with it? I could put it in a bed and pretend it's a person if I didn't want to get caught out of bed. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, what else could I use it for? Um, oh, I could I could draw on it. I could make some art out of it, paint it, that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, I could put a hole in the bottom um, and um, use it as a um, one trouser leg and I could I could use it as a to, to grow plants up like some nice sweet peas or something around it how many am I up to I think you're eight I think that was oh, eight. good, oh, oh, good. <laughs> wonderful work um for Chandy and Dave just to let you know no hesitation just let them come out as quickly as possible but Emmy and Peter that was brilliant but you can go even yeah. faster I want to pick the pace up now so uh Dave right okay Emmy if you'd like to give Dave a subject oh um if it's one trouser hey. leg I know what <laughs> <laughs> um, eight things you'd do with a zebra. <laughs> okay, eight things I'd do with a zebra. Uh, I would uh, start a zoo, I would ride it, I would uh, skin it and sell it on a market. Yeah. I would remake Madagascar with a, a live uh, zebra. I would Aww. stick an ice cream cone on its nose and say that it was a unicorn. I would... <laughs> ride it to the shops, I would 
take a photo of it and share it on social media. And I would try and confuse my niece and tell her that it was a massive cat. Eight! Hey. Excellent! Perfect! Guys, this is amazing. And finally, Chandy. Uh, Dave, would you like to give Chandy? Uh... Okay, Chandy, uh, I want to I'll know... I'll be kind, eight. come on. <laughs> eight things that you do with Miriam Margoyles. <laughs> Who? Uh, um, okay. No, it doesn't matter. Oh, okay. No, go anything, on. Anything you do with Stephen Fry? Go on holiday. One. Uh, play QI. Yeah, two. Very good. Um, talk about mental health. Three. Uh, quiz him about his experiences and what advice would he give to someone else. Four. Uh, oh, have a dinner party with him with uh, celebrities past and present. And Hi. share ideas. Um, Go to Nando's, because who doesn't love Nando's? Um, <laughs> <laughs> and then, oh, try and like campaign for an issue around mental health, like a specific topic within well-being and stuff, um, because he's a, he's a massive figure in the field of what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. um, what am I up to? Seven. You got two more. Oh, go to Domino's as well, because I love Domino's. <laughs> Excellent. Um, and one more. And oh, anything, anything. Oh, invite Brian Cox and then go and like talk about space. Yeah, excellent. Brilliant. Well done, everyone. Um, so that's just I really love playing that one, Peter, because it's just a really helpful way. If you you know you're getting stuck on something, it's helpful for journaling is to write, you know, as much as thoughts as possible. Also creatively, it's just I find that a really helpful game to just write stuff down, just a bit of a brain dump of loads of ideas. Cause you know, you don't always want to go with your first idea. So we'd never have got to Nando's for Stephen Fry. Had <laughs> first idea. I'm going to make that happen now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. Hey, it's all right, it's recorded. So you just need to kind of just slice that little snippet out and just keep posting it. Keep Set posting it, it. it. all <laughs> messages. Yeah. It could be like the next mentality meets, just go to Nando's with the different figures in, in the public eye. <laughs> Do you think that Stephen Fry has the ability to bring people from the past back so that you can have a dinner no. party with them? No, you know how like people are like, what who what the five people you'd have at yeah. a dinner party with you? That's what I meant. Like he'd be one of those five yeah. people. Absolutely. Absolutely brilliant. brilliant. You know what? Uh, on that note, I think it is probably uh, time to, to say thank you so much. You know what, Lauren, you've been absolutely brilliant. For everyone who has stuck around uh, and been part of that silly exercise, thank you so much. Uh, and you know what, let's have a fantastic day. Take care. God bye. bless. Bye. Bye-bye now. Bye, guys. <laughs> it's just you and me. We're going to go to the server. Come here. You've got to come into it. I find it the weirdest bit at the end. I never know when to leave. So I just do it now. <laughs> Thanks, friend. Oh, oh. thanks so much. Oh, uh, I'm so pleased. Thank you for having oh, me. That was a crack. Absolutely there. brilliant. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely brilliant. Thank you so much. Oh, so much positivity. So take care. God bless. Bye.